Hey everybody, welcome to Indie Games Level Up. I'm your host, Phil Lubensky. This episode is coming to you from MIGS, the Montreal International Game Summit. So hey everyone, I'm here with Keith Maxey from Red Meat Games. Keith, how you doing? Pretty good. Red Meat Games, yeah. the company name. So your nickname, Pork Belly, is there a story behind the company name? When we first started the company, we already had our first title scoped out and we realized we wanted to make, you know, what what is our company name going to be? And uh, we were having a barbecue at the time. And we just sat around figuring out what is it going to be, what is it going to be? And then as uh, my friend was slapping the steak down on the barbecue, he's like, what about red meat? And it, it, the name stuck. When we originally started, we were part of a small incubator called the Genesis Center in St. John's at the Memorial University. We were able to use that to move into Kitchener into another incubator. In the region of Kitchener, Waterloo, there's probably about a dozen uh, developers in that area. So we, we just felt it was a better idea for us to, to move to Ontario, uh, where we knew there, there was a talent pool. So tell us about Wits and Warfare. Uh, so Wits of Warfare is a strategy empire building game. Think of it kind of like Clash of Clans, but in this case, instead of just clan leader with some warriors, you're a mad scientist. It actually not only allows you to steal resources from your foe, but you also get to uh, play trivia games. The trivia allows you to generate additional resources as well as to modify gameplay. So when you're actually attacking somebody, you'll get a special power uh, based on your character type. So you're a finalist in the Microsoft Project Goa competition. So could you tell us a little bit more about this competition and are you excited for their winner reveal tomorrow? So the Code Goa competition is all about how uh, developers can use the Microsoft Azure uh, server platform. What we're doing is we're actually reading what people's behavior is on that uh, on the trivia game. So not only are we uh, determining how quickly they're answering, what they're answering right, what they're answering wrong, we actually split it up so that on the server we're um, uh, determining exactly what the difficulty level of each question is, so they're being uh, uh, optimized constantly through gameplay. Trivia is always a, a balance of knowledge and experience. If I have no knowledge or experience in a field, why would I ever do answer any of those questions? So this is our attempt to tweak that game design a little bit and provide people a more customized experience. To the player, what happens is that they will be receiving the trivia content based on how well, they're, how well they're performing. If somebody is doing particularly well in comic books, they'll get more comic book questions and they'll get harder comic book questions depending on what level of difficulty they can handle. And then we have to also worry about the fragmentation, not only of the player demographic and what their ages are, but we also have to take a look at um, somebody who plays in the UK or Australia or the United States and how they're different as a player versus a Canadian player. I am excited. Um, uh, everybody, I've been looking around, all the uh, finalists all have really great games uh, at various stages of development. Third place, we have Dot. Congratulations. Um, in second place, we have Citroen Tactics. Congratulations. And the first pl uh, place winner who's going to be getting $10,000 and taking a trip with me to uh, the Vancouver studios to uh, work on their development, Wits and Warfare. So congratulations. This episode is sponsored by the Canada Media Fund. Since 2010, they've invested over $50 million in Canadian indie game studios. The Canada Media Fund is proud to help indie games level up, explore innovation and creativity in indie games. <laughs>